What we have found is the more we partner, not only with the various tribes, but with the state government and the federal government, the better things are. We run into a big problem whenever we're discussing some of these issues, and they can get very, very complex, where unless you have a good working relationship and you do a lot of education up front, you start to run into brick walls and people start to get very, very frustrated. You know, there, there are regulations and there's things that you need to be prepared for so that you can be successful build, billing for services, uh, building those relationships with your state uh, to start with, um, assessing the need, making sure that you're starting where you need to start. Um, and that you're going in the direction that your community, your elders, um, want and need you to go. A lot of the key relationships focused not on the legislative side of the House, but inside the Department of Health and on the bureaucracy itself. Because then we got down to the nitty gritty of how do we actually go about the daily nuts and bolts of making this stuff work. And that included everything from how do we pay the staff salaries, do we do any external billing? How do we set up any of the administrative reporting systems that the state and federal government require? So being able to have relationships with the state workers themselves inside the department became absolutely vital and remains so to this day. I think Native Health and other urban Indian health programs are stuck in a policy from the, the government, the federal government, that uh, still distinguishes urban Indians from Indians that receive care at an IHS facility or Native Americans that receive care at a, a tribal 638 facility. And that even within a progressive state in terms of 1115 waivers from CMS, uh, urban Indians are left out of it. So we're always looking for opportunities to consult with the federal government and with the state and with the tribes to figure out how we can make the funding issue which will make us the service issue more equitable. We have to establish those um, county health department relationships as well. There's other programs like food nutrition education programs, not only the state but the county provides as well. I think one of the biggest, um, you know, one of the biggest measures in terms of working to get cooperation from state and local levels basically is, is, to our benefit, was focused on data. We needed to continue to drive the data in terms of this is a win-win for all of us. Here's what the tribe can contribute. Here's what we can you know, get your contribution for. And to put that sense of value that would benefit both entities or all of the entities that would be involved in the process. And I think data was a key element in terms of trying to get you know, the um, the needs addressed. What you do is you work specifically with the people who are in charge of doing the rate calculations. You work with the Medicaid director. So you go to the highest level you can there. And when, if you're not, if there's somebody above them and you're not satisfied, you just keep going up. That's why the, that relationship building is very important. When the Medicaid director for the state understands the win-win, that person will drive everything. We are now in our